Well, hello, good morning. Welcome to the Let's Get Loud podcast. This is your solo podcast episode with A. Oh my gosh, where do I start? So I was like, oh, I listen, I'm all over the internet all the time. And I'm like, where am I going to, like, where, have, what have I told the podcast listeners? So I went back and listened to last week's podcast. I'm like, I am so good at podcasts. I really enjoyed listening to myself. It's not something I do often. Anyways, so I am here to give you guys an update on my, sorry, I'm getting my notes ready here. And it's um, uh, creating some noise. Okay, so I am going to give you guys a fat loss journey update, of course, but um, I have a few things to update you guys on. So I know you were wondering last week after my basement, uh, did I clean my basement? Yes, I did. It took a couple of days, but it's, and it's not a hundred percent, but holy moly, like that really needed to happen. That was very therapeutic for me. And now we have an actual space that we can move around down there. And actually my little buddy Alfie asked if he could lift weights with me. Isn't that the cutest thing you've ever heard? Um, he has, he's into football. I mean, I'm assuming most people that follow me know that we're a football family now. So Alfie, I'm sorry. I'm so distracted by my notifications right now from Facebook. And I think I'm going to pause, not like actually pause, but I'm going to just turn off Facebook. There we go. So, um, yeah, Alfie started playing football last year which was huge for him. He's not like a sporty kid. Gross motor skills are a little bit delayed for him because of his uh, learning um, difference. It's his processing is slow. So like you throw a ball at that kid's face and he like tells his brain, he's like, Kate, like his brain tells his hands, you need to catch this ball, but it's just, it's slow. It, that's, that's how it works for him. And trying to process like two things at once can be really difficult. So like learning to ride a bike was like next level. So he started uh, playing football and fell in love and it's been true love ever since. And so they said they were doing this like dry training thing, which I know doesn't really make sense because it's always dry, but you guys get what I mean. And so he was in the gym, like throwing a medicine ball. And he, I think, you know, we just talked about like what he wants to be a quarterback, poor buddy. Oh my gosh, you guys like, I'm all for him playing football, but like, is it my job to crush his dreams or is it my job to like manage his expectations? Like, you know, you don't want to be like, that's never going to happen because that's like not nice. You know, that's not nice to be like, never. Uh, but I also want to manage his expectations. So anyways, he wants to be a quarterback. And I, and I said to him, I said, do you think that you, what are the skills required for a quarterback? And he's like throwing and catching. And I'm like, wait, do you feel like your skills with your peers are better because there's only like one quarterback, right? So it's like the guy, you know? And I said, like, do you think you're the best? Because that's what they're going to pick on the team, the quarterback. And he was like, no. So that was like a good moment because he realized. And then I said, okay, what could we do to improve that? And he's like more muscles and practice throwing. And I'm like, okay, like, you know, we can do that. So long story short, he came downstairs and did a weights workout with me. Let's see if he does another one. His form was like terrible, but I mean, he's 11 and, but he did it. He didn't complain. It was fun. And I thought, oh my gosh, is this going to be like my thing with him? I would love that. I would love for that to be more of a family thing and less of just a me thing. So anyways, that was fun. So I actually, I got on the story by, because hopefully you guys are listening to this uh, podcast on times two. Now we have room in the basement to do that. So that feels really good. So that's like check off the to-do list. This weekend, I need to pack for Mexico. So we're leaving on Saturday. So we're leaving a week tomorrow. I'm actually recording this podcast uh, in real time, like recording it today, going to put it out today. So, oh, that makes me think, oh, I need to record it. Oh no, I can do it next Friday. I was like, mm, I'll have to do two podcasts next Friday. Oh, good. So I am... Um, 
going to be going to Mexico. So I need to open up suitcases. I've been kind of like collecting things. I did a last minute Amazon order yesterday. So I need to just open the suitcases and just get the kids to try some stuff on, count some things, make sure that, you know, we take what we actually need. I don't think you need a lot bathing suits and a cover up. So that's where we're at. That's this weekend's plans, but plot twist, not so much a plot twist twist. Maybe you guys knew this. My cat is, is an asshole. My cat's an asshole. And when he was a little baby, he was so cute and so snuggly and he loved me so much. And he would come on my chest every single night and snuggle me. And he's just really not giving me that love that I need to put up with the fact that his hair is on my bed. Like, absolutely not. He bites people. He just like, he's playing. He's not like, he's playing. So if you're walking by, your feet seem really fun, especially if you have slippers on. And so he just like, attacks, which is really unacceptable. And more than anything though, well, he also goes on the counters, super annoying. And I just like, I put him down, I put him down, I put him down, I put him down. And then it's almost like I give up. I'm like, okay, but like, that's disgusting. <sighs> then everyone, he's peeing in the kid's bathtub. Now there's worse place than a cat that a cat can pee. There's better places. The better place is the litter box. But peeing and pooping and not in the litter box is like unacceptable. Absolutely not. No. Will not accept. No. So I'm really going through this process where I'm like, Ugh. also, I didn't want to have to put in the effort. Like I know your people like you can train him. You can do things. I don't want to do things though. I don't want more work. I wanted a cute, snuggly cat that would love me and I would scoop its poop out of the litter box. That's what I signed up for. Anything above and beyond that, absolutely not. So if you're looking for a cat, let me know. Just kidding. Piper would never let me give it up. She, I mean, the other two, I think are a little bit more like, I think they'd be sad, but they'd get over it. But Piper is like, this is my cat. She's definitely going to be a crazy cat lady. So next up on the list of things to talk about, are we watching Love is Blind? Do we think any of the couples are going to make it? I really, my heart is hurting for Chelsea. She's the one that said she looked like Megan Fox, which she for sure should not have said that she looked like Megan Fox. And not that she doesn't look like Megan Fox. I totally see the similarity. And I think Chelsea is a stunning, beautiful human being inside and out, I am sure. I see it with my eyes. Beautiful. I mean, I don't know her personally, but anyways, uh, she, her just, she's struggling so much with her confidence and needing reassurance from Jimmy all the time. I'm really struggling with that relationship. It's like hurting me to watch her need to be reassured all the time. I don't know if any of the couples are going to say yes at this point. So interesting. So that's what I'm doing in my evening. So fun. Okay. Okay. I don't know why I just like unloaded that with you guys. Okay. Let's talk about weight loss. Oh, all right, guys, here's the, here's the real hard truth. So I went on that 30 day mindful fat loss journey and I really didn't lose weight. Like I, when I compared day one to day 30, I was down a pound, like the, no. And the trend was not trending down. Like it was like up, down, up, down. It just, I, I didn't lose weight. I did not lose weight. 30 days tracking, journaling. And when I say tracking, not counting calories, just like writing things down, journaling, being connected, you know, really wasn't drinking a lot and not because, I, oh, I didn't want to lose, like, if that wasn't a, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose weight. So I'm not going to drink. That was just like a organic time period where I didn't have a lot of social things. So that just like happened naturally. Anyways, um, didn't lose weight. And that was like, that, that's, that's frustrating. That's frustrating. So I'll just do a quick recap. If you guys have not been a part of this extravaganza, I came back from Hawaii and just in Hawaii, I wasn't feeling hundred percent comfortable in my skin, which I'm sure will happen again in Mexico, but it is what it is. We're going and we're going to enjoy it. And we're not going to let our body hold us back from fully enjoying that experience. That was a pep talk to myself. Probably some of you guys that are going on vacation also need that pep talk. You're welcome. Anywho, and I said, I, so I came back and I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose weight. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to journal and be mindful and stay connected and I'm going to lose weight. And I didn't, I didn't. So like now what? 
And I refuse to stay stuck in victim mentality and be like, poor me. It's just like, this is my reality. So now what? So what I learned is that weight loss is for sure going to look different for me in my forties. That does not need to be bad. That just means it's going to be different. And so this really was like a really big turning point for me, a really big realization. It's like, okay, weight loss is going to look different for you than it did. And I haven't been on a purposeful weight loss journey for a really long time. So it's like, okay, um, timelines are not my vibe. So I shared this a little bit on the last podcast, but I didn't purposely set timelines, but I just said I was going to do something for 30 days. And then I had told the community group that I would update them on my weight once a week. Well, what that inadvertently did almost made a weigh in day for me, which I, without me really doing that on purpose. And I realized that was creating a lot of drama and a lot of noise in my brain. So no timelines. So I'm going to tell you guys, pre, I have like a pre-Mexico plan. And then I don't know what I'm going to do post-Mexico. I'll give myself some time to like think about it and digest. And obviously I'll bring you guys along the ride, but I'm going to tell you, I'm, I've got a pre-Mexico plan. Okay. So that's my timeline, but not because I, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't I just tell you? So I am going to, I like never thought I would say these words again, and I need to say them. And then I need to explain, I'm going to count calories. Duh, duh, duh. I know you guys are like, what? You talk so much about not counting calories. Here's the thing. My intentions behind counting calories for the next week are not to lose weight. It's to give myself more information. I need more information. I need to know what is going on with my body right now. I need to know, has my energy out really reduced by that much? Or was I simply consuming more energy than I really realized the last month? I'm going to be super honest. I think it's the latter. I think like most people, I was consuming more energy than I what really realized, which is extremely common when people are trying to lose weight. Most this happens to most people, not because we're bad. It's because we're human beings. And that's just like human nature. Um, but it's just like, I need, I just need to remind myself. I just need this little uh, information piece. I need more information. And so I, again, I just like really need to be clear with you guys for me, and I would never tell you what to do or what not to do. This is your way weight loss for a reason. You were in charge of this, but you need to be honest with yourself when you're choosing the tools that you are going to be choosing for weight loss. Okay. And counting calories is a tool. Okay. I am not using this tool. Counting calories is not sustainable for me. It does not fit my lifestyle. It works on Monday when everyone's at school and I'm not super busy and I've meal prepped on a Sunday. That's when it works. Okay. It does not, it is not sustainable for me. It does not work long-term. Um, I do it, it. No, no, no. Okay. So this is not a long-term thing for me. This is a short term one week. Let's count our calories. Let's realign. Let's see where we're at. And then we can go from there because let's say my energy out now is a lot lower now. If I know that, that's going to be, that's going to create a different plan for me versus me knowing my energy out isn't all that different than it was before. I just need to adjust. Do you see? I mean, both are going to require adjusting. That's what this is about. You guys, successful weight loss is about adjusting. I'm at a massive adjustment period right now. And I'm, I'm bringing you guys along the ride with me, which sometimes I regret doing <laughs> because there's some pushback, there's some judgment, there's some opinions, but here I am. This is my, my place on this earth. But I think more than anything, I hope that I'm giving you guys a space. Those women that are in your forties that are listening to this, that are, have been following along this journey. I hope I'm, I'm helping you to feel seen. And I hope that I'm giving you spot inspiration that if you are also, having if weight loss is also different for you than it was before that I'm inspiring you to continue that I'm inspiring you to fight for this if that's if this is what you actually want also you guys I can have the a moment where I realize that my energy out is a lot lower than before and I can also choose to do nothing like that might be a part of my choice going forward like I might choose do you know what it's not worth it to me I'm gonna where now I work on accepting my body as it is 
Like I can make that choice as well. So right now it's like, I need more information to make my choice. So I am going to count calories for one week yesterday. So I did it. I actually started on Wednesday. So no Tuesday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, great, easy. Like I said, I had a food prepped at home. Um, it, um, didn't have a ton of family dinners because we have so many sports and activities that basically on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, we eat separate shifts. So it doesn't feel as big of a deal for me to eat something different than my family. Now I know I can eat something the same as my family and can calories, but sometimes that's just like complicated and it's easier to eat what's in your Tupperware. Do you see what's happening? Do you see what's happening? That's not the person I want to be. I want to enjoy home cooked family meals with my family without worrying about how many calories are in it. So I know this is not long-term. Okay. So just to show you that two days were super easy because they were at home, whatever. Yesterday was not so easy because I had a dinner out and already there was drama around not being able to count my calories. I'm going to come, I'm going to stop talking about the calorie counting part because I want that to be about next week's episode. What my reflections from a week of counting calories. Okay. Pause. So that's where I'm at, you guys. Um, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I didn't think I'd ever count calories again. Um, but here I am. So with the intention of I need more information, I do want to circle back to energy out. So most of your energy out, guys, comes from you just functioning, your organs functioning, your daily bodily functions. I don't move a lot. I have a desk job. I sit at my desk. I work, sorry, I work all day from my desk. So I actually don't have a lot of energy out. Neat, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So those of you that are like when I was teaching, I had a lot more energy out. Those of you, if you are a trades person, you would have a significant amount of energy out, right? We all have a different amount of energy out related to just like living our lives. I'm quite sedentary and more sedentary than I've ever been in the sense that I just really sit at my desk. <laughs> So that's something to consider why less energy is going out. So I want to clear up how I'm all over the place, but stick with me. Why do we, why is there less energy? Okay. Why is weight loss different as you age? The biggest reason is less energy is going out. Why is there less energy going out? You ask less energy is going out because, um, you, for the most part, the biggest impact is that you're moving less. Also, not only on top of me being sedentary, my job, I'm a mother now of two nine-year-olds and an 11 year old. My life was a lot different just four years ago. Like I was running around chasing them. Like I used to go to the park and run around after them. Now I don't even go to the park. I send them to the park with their cell phone. Like I've made it right? So that's just like, I, I just am not as active. And that happens naturally as we age. Thing number two, you lose muscle as you age. If you are not actively working to keep or main or gain muscle, you will be burning less energy. I used to lift weights. I don't anymore. I've lost a lot of that muscle and that it requires muscle requires more energy to function day to day than fat or other tissue. So that's the biggest impact of why. So it's so important to me that you don't just think that the reason why you're burning less energy is because you're older. It's because you're moving less and you have less muscle. And both of those things you can change, you can impact, you can tweak. And those are two things that I'm very willing to do. I am very willing going forward. So like I said, I'm just like a pre-Mexico plan. It's just, I need more information. Post-Mexico will be like a long-term Okay, now what? Like you have all the information, now what? What do you want to do? How are you gonna do this? So some things that I'm definitely willing to do is moving more, absolutely willing to move more, absolutely willing to uh, create more muscle, absolutely. So those are two things that I'm really gonna be looking at when I get back, um, really willing to increase the amount of nutrient dense options that I'm choosing, that plays a bigger role, in your weight loss journey as you age, sleep, I could sleep more. So there's just some things I'm flirting with working on when I get back. But right now it's like, okay, hey, I've got a week. I'm going to count calories and I'm just going to see where I'm at. So I'm consuming between like not, about 1900 calories a day. So I'm not like starving myself because I know I can lose weight without it. Let's also remember that only two years ago, I did an experiment where I ate only Tim Hortons for a month and I lost seven pounds. 
that was only two years ago. And I was eating about 1900 calories a day and I lost seven pounds. That's significant. So I really need to remind myself of that. And so that tells me like, has something really shifted that much in seven day in two years? Another thing that shows a reminded me of is like, I'm living a different life than I was two years ago. About two years ago, I joined Beauty Counter and um, I'm not blaming Beauty Counter for my weight gain, but uh, I go on a lot of really fun trips right now. And so that plays an impact. I have a really fun life and it was very gradual, this little, you know, total weight gain. It was about seven pounds total over the past, like four years that played a role, that lifestyle. And it just kind of like caught up to me a little bit. So again, I can choose to accept it. I can choose to accept that. That's for me to do, but we'll just see where I'm at. So I just, all my thoughts, bleh, I didn't, I definitely could have done a better job of organizing them for sure. But you guys are now fully up to date on my life. You know, my basement's clean. You know, my cat's a dick. You know, I need to pack for Mexico this weekend. You know that I'm on a after 40 weight loss journey and I'm bringing you guys along the ride for it. I got a, so many DMs last week and I really appreciate it. If this connected with you guys, I'd love to connect with you and DM. Let me know how you're feeling. Let me know how your weight loss is going. Let me know what your plans are, what you're doing and how this is going. Oh, I thought of one more thing. So sorry. I don't want, I, I really, I don't want to influence people to start counting calories. That is the opposite of what I want. I want to remind you that I just spent a month extremely connected and consistent to trying to create a calorie deficit and was not successful. So like, let's start there. I also need to share with you guys that I do not have any massive, I've healed my relationship with food. I do not have any drama around food. So it's like, do have you healed your relationship with food? Are you, do you binge eat anymore? No. Like, do you eat one cookie and then eat 10? No. Do you binge eat on the weekends? No. Like I have healed my relationship with food. Check. I don't have any massive behavior habit changes that I want to change in order to create weight loss. I am overall showing up as who I want to be. It's like small tweaks. There's no big behavior change. Then I spent a month being consistent. Now I'm here. So if you are coming into a post 40 weight loss journey, please do not come here. Okay. I have already nailed the essentials. I'm just looking at the extra little things now. If you have not nailed the essentials, if you have not healed your relationship with food, if you still have food, noise, diet, trauma, that's where I need you to put your energy. Then put your energy on some consistent habit changes. And then we can talk about the next step. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for letting me vulnerable. I feel like this was a long one. Um, next week, I will give you guys an update on how a week of calorie counting went. And then I will update you. Maybe I'll wait. I feel like you guys would love it if I waited. I wonder if I could record a podcast on my way home from Mexico. I think you guys would enjoy waiting for that, wouldn't you? Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to stop talking. Okay, everyone. Have an amazing weekend. Have an amazing Friday. Thank you. Bye.